it does kind of all match. It does fall together because for those who understand the roots of that plant species, cannabis and hemp being the same species. So I'm, I'm trying to bring it back together, trying to bridge communication, understanding, education, innovation, you know, create eco synergy, an entire ecosystem of how we approach the species and what we do and why we do it and for whom we do it and doing it better. Welcome to the IHEMP Hour. My name is Dave Craybill. I'm with IHEMP Michigan. IHEMP Michigan advocates for wellness and people in the planet through hemp, and it begins with the farmer. But today we're going to begin with Mike Brennan on the other side of the point three. Mike, you have some news for us? I do. I'm the non-farmer. Uh, so, uh, but uh, we got lots of stuff cooking. Uh, we just put out our newsletter this morning at Michigan Marijuana Report. And uh, a couple of big things. Cresco Labs, one of the biggest players in multi-state operators in the country, has uh, christened on Monday their big new lab in Marshall, Michigan, where they're going to be doing uh, processing and growing. Um, I'm assuming they're going to be setting up a bunch of uh, retail points. Uh, they're also looking for 110 new employees. So that's something that anybody wants to break into the cannabis business. They have openings in all different areas. So uh, check it out. You can go to mimarijuanareport.com, and there's a link there that goes to their job site. I also want to mention that Abco Labs, based out of Warren, Michigan, uh, just this week, I got their, finally got their MRA license to uh, test adult use marijuana. Uh, took them 18 months to get it. Part of that was the city of Warren, each, each of the cities has control over the process, and Warren was not a big enthusiast behind it, so they slowed the process down, but they finally got it. The other thing they also test, of course, is hemp and uh, medical marijuana. So if anybody's looking for another testing facility, Abco Labs in Warren. Um, And then uh, what did I mention? Let me see what else. Oh, uh, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, a virtual session is going to be going on that will feature Andrew Brisbo, who's the MRA director, as well as some other folks that we know, like Jamie Cooper and Tatiana Grant from my part of the world. And uh, they're going to be looking at marketing, how to market cannabis, and you know certainly that would be involved hemp as well. It's free. It's virtual. It's at four. Details at mimarijuanareport.com. And finally, I wanted to make sure I had to clear this with Blaine and uh, Dave, but um, we're putting together, we as a Michigan Marijuana Report, are putting together a holiday gift guide because we had a lot of people, I had a lot of people soliciting me, hey, are you going to do a gift guide? Well, yes, we are, starting November 1st, and uh, it'll include eight weeks of uh, a newsletter that will be just totally devoted to the gift guide that we push out on Monday to about 3,000 cannabis enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And then also, as I mentioned to the guys, because we are a news publication, I have permission to work with a lot of the cannabis Facebook groups where we reach about 40,000. And then, so we're going to have a big social media push. And as a, and what, wait, there's more. As an added bonus, we're also going to include MITechnews.com, where I reach about 5,000 business and tech folks. And somehow I believe within that crowd, probably a few of them consume or actually might even be interested in trying CBD products. So for the hemp group, uh, this would be a great opportunity to at least get the, your brand in front of a lot of people. And we can't guarantee sales, but we can guarantee a lot of eyeballs. And then, of course, we'll be promoting it on uh, 420 Post on, on Wednesdays, my live show. And I'll even throw in an extra promotion on my MI Tech TV show on Monday, which is the business and tech crowd. And just to kind of remind them, this is available. They can check it out. And here's the real kicker. Now, we're, everybody else, we're asking $600. But wait for iHemp members. We're knocking $50 oh, no. off the top. You know, so only five fifty, which boils down to two hundred and seventy five dollars a month. And as I said to the guys before we started, we don't sell anything for two seventy five a month. So this is one heck of a deal. Merry Christmas. All right, cool. Thanks. Mike, what's the best way for people to get information on that if they wanna get that like? Well you just zap me uh, directly at Mike at mimarijuanareport.com. dot com. 
Um, and, uh, you know, if you have, I'm sure you'll have questions. Oh, the other part, as I mentioned, is if, if you have multiple products, every week you can change your product. One week you can feature one, next week you can feature another. So, you know, if you have a lot of products you want to push, or if just a single product that you want to push for eight weeks, we got you covered. So it's our little give back. I want to thank the guys for having me on the show. So we thought we'd discount that for IHEMP members. And like I say, we've never done anything quite this inexpensive that has this much impact. So give it a try. All right. There we go. Okay. Christmas is going to be here soon, isn't it? Holy cow. I know. We're already almost mid-October already. Gosh. <laughs> All right, Blaine, what, what what do you have going on? And then we'll get to our lovely guest, Shira. I'm looking forward to talking to Shira. Absolutely. Um, I like hanging with you guys. I'm enjoying this whole thing. Excellent. Talk to nice, nice background, by the way. I like that. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, so a lot of things going on. Uh, great busy month for uh, hemping, for sure. Uh, everybody's out uh, doing getting ready to harvest if they're not already harvesting. Uh, so that's happening uh, this Saturday. From 9 o'clock until kind of whenever, uh, at the Critter Barn in Zealand, we're going to finish that brick-making project that we started in the spring. Oh, you really? Yeah, we're going to do the hemp, hemp bricks, yeah, hemp crete. So um, everybody wants to come out and help uh, join, that's not a problem. It's the Critter Barn. Just do a search for the Critter Barn in Zealand, Michigan, and uh, bring your kids out if you want to. The critters will all be running around there. They can spend time with that. So we're going to have fun uh, finishing up that project. And then the following Saturday, Day, we're going to have big fun because uh, we're going to do uh, uh, growlers in the grow, as we call it. Uh, we're going to be at Lakeland Hemp um, in Williamsburg, Elk Lake, uh, Michigan, up north by Traverse City. A lot of pretty colors. I've been driving quite a bit last week, and the colors are just gorgeous. And they'll be peaked by that week. And then uh, we're going to visit Traverse City, uh, Michael Tui. Uh, at his facility there and uh, do a little cookout and just kind of enjoy uh, having a little relaxing weekend kind of thing. So I'd uh, love to see you all be part of that. Um, no registration is required. Uh, there'll be information on the website on it if you need to, but uh, that's kind of the deal we got going there. So, And then, of course, we're busy in the midst of planning, and uh, everybody's getting their boosts and signing up for the uh, expo that's going to be in January. That's January 21st and 22nd in Lansing, Michigan, uh, the Radisson Hotel. Now, Friday night will be the party night through with the uh, Hempy Awards. So if you're making any kind of hemp product, doesn't matter what it is, it's $50 per item to put it in. We have judges that vote on it, and then you get really cool awards. Dave, you got here? Because I'm, I'm, I'm on the road today. Uh, Dave, do you have your Hempy Award there? I've got it right here. I've got or it. His, what, was here it what was your award for, Dave? Oh, <laughs> oh that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. very nice. So this was uh, this was second. This I'm, I'm at Icon Processors today. Is where I make it, where we do the bottling of the oil. And uh, so this particular one was second place for personal care products. So what this is, this was a, a piece of hemp wood from Kentucky Hemp Wood. Ah, uh, there, love and, them. Squire Babcock turned it on a lathe and made a little bowl out of it. So it's even a useful gift, and it's uh, made by hemp. So we're gonna, we'll are gonna we have a cool one again this year, for sure. And we've got a DJ all set up to come in and play some music and have some fun. So it's going to be great. Hey, and I also want to mention that in the evening at the Grand Traverse Lodge, they're going to be having the Cannabis Masquerade Ball. Uh, I don't, I'm just promoting it for a friend. Heidi, who's running that, and so if you could you could do the Michael Tui thing during the day, and then if you want to go to the Masquerade Ball in the evening, and it's fully catered and music and well, on October sixteenth, you're talking October about October sixteenth. If you're in Traverse City for the the hemp mm-hmm. outing with Michael, you can also go to the Bear, and I think it's a hundred dollars a person, one hundred and eighty a couple, but that includes all your meals and everything, and nah, nah, nah. So yeah. can you send, <laughs> send me some information that on that. If you go to, and I'll put it in the events calendar on IHEMP Michigan, Mike. Yeah, so I'll do that. Yeah. To the, uh, Heidi's, Heidi's a good person, good friend of mine, and it's a, and I and I'll be in Seattle on the 16th, so can't make that. But all that fun stuff. But hey, you know, I got yeah, there's things happening. Right? That's great. So you asked me last week. Mike, what I would go as if I was going to go to that. Oh, right, right, yes. I never gave an answer, but it's Batman. Batman, okay. okay. And then Dave could go as Robin, I'm thinking. <laughs> what, what do you think? You know, I'm so. going to be Wonder Woman then. Uh, All right, yeah. All right. 
Right, or, yeah, that'll work. That would be fun. I, I'd, I'd, uh, even, I'd, I'd even pay you for a picture on something like that, you know. So, <laughs> Hey, I could start my own OnlyFans account, so that's um, – yeah. No, you guys don't, don't even ask what that is. My daughter so, covered that on her YouTube channel. It's a whole different platform, one that we well, what, The big one's Cameo, right? I don't know. I, yeah. you know, I, just, I live vicariously through my uh, daughter, the YouTuber. She's yeah, there's a Cameo. People are, yeah. Yeah, I don't know all the different ones out there. But, yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. Whatever but, you're into, you can find it on the Internet. That's you can. For sure. You mm. can, unless they want to suppress you, then you can't. Just saying. <laughs> Speaking of that. uh, Just a few other things, uh, and then we'll get into the show. Um, We talked about the expo. Uh, Anybody wants to uh, uh, the early bird, we extended the early bird just until uh, uh, October the 15th, so you can still get uh, a little discount on that if you want to get your spot for that. Plus, on Friday night, too, if you don't want to do the full expo thing on Friday night, we have tables available over at the Radisson that you can set up just for that evening and get everybody there. So a lot of great opportunities for everybody to do that. Um, you know, right now there's not a lot of cannabis news going on. Last week was pretty big, and then, of course, this week we're just trying to get the budgets passed and get those things going. So, But, again, we're going to need everybody's support to get these bills passed in the Senate. Um, so make sure we're contacting our senators on that. The, you know, the, 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 I just want to mention the Cannabis Banking Act a week ago was in part of a, some sort of military appropriation. National, yeah, the national defense, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So, But it, I don't think it's going to get through the Senate, but at least it got a Approved in the House, right? You know, so. yeah, the House has always passed. Before. It's been the Senate that we've had the problem, and that's why we got to hit our senators and say, look, you need to get on this, you need to support this, you need to be a co-sponsor. Right. Uh, we need to do that. Uh-huh. And uh, just in a little fun news I'll throw out here. Uh, so Clint Eastwood, uh, if you've been following this, I read this a while ago that it was uh-huh. happening, but uh, Clint Eastwood could see a lot of green soon. He's just been awarded nearly $6.1 million dollars in his lawsuit against CBD retailers that used his likeness to try to sell their product. And uh, I, I don't know the companies that, that – they don't list the companies. Oh, goodness. Eastern <laughs> European companies. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, and we learned nothing, people. Right. Nothing. And and I read the story. He warned them several times that they couldn't do that, and they just told him, you know. So then he sued them, you know. So. Well, you know. Good luck. Good luck. About it. Can't yeah, blame right. them. Collecting in Eastern Europe. Good luck with that, right? <laughs> well, the the other piece of news: uh, CBD has a clear path in California. That's big news. Yeah. Yeah, that just came out from the U.S. Up round table, so thanks for their hard work. Mm-hmm. Yep, the, the governor signed it, I think, yesterday? Yep. Years ago, maybe? So, yeah. Well, that, so, unfortunately, that's maybe the way it's going to have to happen, right? We're going to have to do Yeah, the states are going to have to push the issue. Right. The states that have the, uh, the will to do so. Yeah. So, Dave, that's pretty much all I got right now. Um, so, uh, let's get into uh, how about the ABCs of CBD? Yeah, so we have the author right here with us, Shira Adler. Shira no. is a highly vetted fempreneur. Now, I hadn't heard that term before. But I, I made it up. I'm going to go with an entrepreneur who's <laughs> an awesome woman. So, but, you know, I've, I've met Shira a few times, and, and it uh, becomes immediately evident that Shira is a open and caring person. So I want to say that first. So it's, you know, I'm glad to know you, Shira. Really okay. appreciate it. And, um, but I, I highlighted some things in your book and your about um, that I think was really interesting. So. <laughs> In addition to her endless obsession with all things CBD, which we can understand that rabbit hole, right? Shira is a cantor, non-denominational, interfaith minister, certified past life regressionist, and voiceover artist. Basically, Shira's throat chakra has no off switch. So we're going to have to go down that rabbit hole just a little bit. But uh, okay. but, but before we get there, so Shira also is a mom. She has uh, two teens, Emma and y- Yona, and, and I'm talking to Shira, you know, her, her one uh, daughter has got some aspirations uh, to be in, you know, she's she, she's bringing joy to the world, so that's good. So Shira li- lives in uh, Westchester County, that's in New York, right? Yes. 
and uh, part, her partner Andy with two rescue oh, pups. No, uh, uh, that was that's the first edition of the book. That's I apologize. For that. No, we don't even mention that man's name. Well, <laughs> all right, we'll we won't we'll go down that rabbit hole. We'll cut no, that out of the. We we'll cut to. that out of the on-demand. Part, right, so I'm gonna set that book down. So we have a new book coming <laughs> out. So let's share. Thanks for joining us. Oh gosh, you guys, you are just fabulous. And Dave, yeah. you know, I, I'm a huge fan of yours. And yeah, we've crossed paths now at several conferences, but I feel oddly like this is a great combination. We should do more of this. Uh, you need a female sidekick, you guys. I, I could bring a lot of life and energy. I don't know. I feel like I'm the Mel Kay and one of you is Charlie Ward or Simon Parks or someone that this is, we got the same vibe. We know a lot. We, we like to talk and uh, a good energy. So no, anyway, no yeah, thank you for welcoming me um, to the show officially and I'm seeing you again. And uh, yeah, the new book, well, the, I will back up a teeny bit. This current book has actually had, oops, there we go, three edits because I'm actually the publishing company as well, at least temporarily. And the reason and I did that Can you get all was, that on a business card, all that stuff that they throw yeah. on and then you're a publisher and an yeah, entrepreneur? Yeah. Is that all on one business card or what? It's kind of uh, just... We use generalized terms now, but my background is definitely in the spiritual care, the, I guess I'm an expert in the pain points of humanity and how to address them through holistic, natural, integrative means. And yes, my throat chakra has no off switch. In fact, it's infused with titanium thanks to a massive surgery I had just before COVID. Uh, January really? 2020. Yeah. In fact, I'm missing a couple of this and they said, you know, divine, whatever you want to call it, said, we need you to speak more and do more. So we're going to give you a chance to rest quietly by force for nine, 10 weeks. We're going to infuse that throat chakra. And then we're going to ask you to go do the biggest work you've ever done. And that's, huh. that's kind of what I'm doing now. So it does kind of all match. It does fall together because for those who understand the roots of that plant species, cannabis and hemp being the same species. So I'm, I'm trying to bring it back together, trying to bridge communication, understanding, education, innovation, you know, create eco synergy, an entire ecosystem of how we approach the species and what we do and why we do it and for whom we do it and doing it better. That's really, you know, so whether it was from clergy perspective, whether I did it in my spiritual counseling sessions, whether it's because I made products, and then I offer those products, it's kind of the same thing. I'm here to help heal humanity and remind people that we are stewards of each other and our planet and that we can do the best work we've ever done in our lives by working through this plant species. Yeah. Wow. I summarized it. And I, you know, and I, I love how you geek out on the science of it all, I too. Do. So, I do um, geek out on the science, what, yeah. You're, uh, you know, so let's go down that rabbit hole a little bit. What uh, what are the, some of the things you're working on, some of the research you're working on? Yeah, so there are two aspects, again, looking at how people intersect and what the information is that we give to the people. So the book is important, the original book, which is this, the ABCs of CBD. There will be another big edit coming out in the next, hopefully, six months uh, because – the science changes, the legal landscape changes, our understanding of our own bodies and the medicine changes. So every time that happens, I have to update that book. I will mention briefly the second book, we can come back to it, is about the people in the industry. It's called Pink Moccasins, and each chapter is about a woman in the uh, cannabis or hemp industry and how we stand in our shoes physically, stand in our power, and walk our journeys. So every chapter is a different pair of shoes and the woman who's wearing them and what they represent because you can't walk in another woman's shoes, but you sure as hell can admire them. <laughs> That's the next book is about that. That would be a good uh, tagline, too, you know? Yeah. Exactly. I do wow. love my taglines. I have yeah. a passion for taglines. Now. But it, it's really true. It also reminds me of um, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what you think separates you. And right now in the, at the time culturally and <laughs> in the climate worldwide, we need to do more to bring people back together, not create more divisiveness. So I see this book and the stories as a vehicle of reminding each other, especially for women, when you look down and see another woman's cute pair of shoes, I don't care what country you're in. I don't care your background, educational, religious experience, doesn't matter. You will comment on those shoes, and it's a way of validating your expression to another human being. I see you. I appreciate you. I mirror for you. 
Q2s. So I know it sounds kitschy, but but there's really something to that. We have to remember that which connects us as these spiritual beings having a human experience versus listening to all the talking heads that are trying to pull us apart from each other and mm-hmm. even pull the plant species apart from itself. Yeah. So that's, that's really where I come from. Everything I do is about bridging that, putting things and putting people back together and back into synergy with themselves, with their families, with their communities, and with the planet. Oh. In a nutshell. So no small goal. So <laughs> what is there, it sounds like, so right? It's always, you know? it's always interesting to hear the stories of how got, things got started, right? I mean, yeah. I, don't, I never knew Dave until, what, three years ago now, Dave? I mean, yeah. I don't know Dave. And now they're booze yeah. and buddies. They're going to go as Batman and Robin to the Master of the Ball. I mean, come on. I think we know? should be the so, Avengers, right? We could do a whole a whole crew. We could all be the Avengers. Isn't like yeah. Avengers? Oh, can I can be Thor? Yeah. Ooh, you can be with, the, with your voice, you have to be Thor. Be Thor. Come on. Mm. I love your voice. is magnificent. You should be doing more voiceover, my friend. And, yeah, uh, I know. I've, I've thought of it in the past. That yeah. deep resident yeah. voice. That's that is beautiful. Radio. That's really yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love it. I love, love, love it. So the uh, the research I'm doing is actually, you asked me about that, coming back to the new company. So I'm launching, I've been working on this since the, let's say, the COVID-forced pivot that a lot of us found ourselves going, oh, wow, life just completely irrevocably changed. Now what? And instead of shrinking smaller, I went much, much, much bigger because I saw an opportunity to, again, address some of the concerns and the challenges that I see inherent in the industry to begin with. And I saw an opportunity to go back to our roots. So my whole passion is modern alchemy, which is the merging of ancient plant wisdom with modern science. And I do think that respectfully, we have to have an appreciation and an understanding and an integration of both sides of that. Because you're talking about plant matter, botanicals, nature, uh, how it was created and how it works naturally with the human body, right? The endocannabinoid receptor system and all of that. And one of the things now that I've been in for kind of a while, um, hopefully I'm older than I actually look. I'll tell you, I started my company. You look about 29, that's why. Oh, I, I please, I, gone. yeah, gosh, yeah. yuck's gone. <laughs> Not even close. Uh, um, okay. No, I'm over 50. All right. And, uh, yeah, I'm proud of it. And uh, my kids are 18 and 20 now. Mm. My son is, this makes it, you know, the time of us having this conversation, my son is about to leave in days for the Marines. Mm. So I am very, very proud of my daughter is, yes, a YouTuber and a sculptor and a visual artist, just amazing, funny, funny, talented creature. And she's a senior in college. Mm. So I have literally raised two pretty exceptional human beings. And I did so mostly as a single mom. So I'm, I'm very, very proud. I really am. But Excellent, as you should be. It's also an opportunity, though, you know, when you see these little people that you raise and they're going off in the world doing their thing, it's about the what's next. So between COVID and where they are in their lives, uh, it really was time for me to say, what do I really, really care about? And if I had something I could do that would have lasting impact beyond my products, which I love and are very unique and still nobody has what I do, I was the first person to put CBD into an aromatherapy series, understanding and respecting the tradition of what essential oils means. In our cannabis and hemp side, we call them terpenes because they are. But on the holistic, integrative, functional medicine side, we call them aromatherapy. Same thing, different word. And so I was the first one to kind of say these plant essences were designed to work synergistically together. And I started with uh, the aromatherapy in 2011 and I soft launched with CBD infused sprays in 2016 at the Cannabis World Congress and Business Expo in New York City and I was voted by HuffPost as one of the coolest new products because no one had done that. It's a delivery method that makes sense. I know the power of aromatherapy. I've lived it. I've shared it and it just made sense. And every time the world gets denser or problems get feel heavier, I say, what can I create an offer to help people through it? And that's really where the products came from. That's where the book came from. And that's now where the new company, which is called Eco Synergy, comes from. We are essentially creating the one thing that does not yet exist and should to tie every element of this industry together. And it's a CRO. You're familiar? Do you know what that stands for? It's the 
Unless customer you're in the science. relationship, yeah. Yeah, it should be, right? It can be yeah. me. It stands for a uh, contract research organization. Oh, okay. I guess it confuses it. So our CRO is called Crocus, after the flower that's resilient and the first one to push up in spring, bringing new light and joy to the world. Uh, mm. But it also represents um, the spice saffron, the beautiful, exotic, you know, simple but powerful spice is part of the Crocus family. And my mm. chief science officer, this guy is really crazy brilliant my soul brother dr kari met alif he is an md phd from um, harvard and stanford you know total slacker but he also studied plant medicine and botanicals he's one of the experts in the world he studied with shamans in the jungles all over the world so like me he has it's both it's love of science but love of plants and nature and medicine and metaphysical and the quality of life so we um We've been working on this for a while. I have an exceptional team, some of the smartest people I've ever met that I've gathered over the years of knowing and meeting through the industry. And we are putting together Crocus, which will stand for Cannabis Research Organization Cultivating Universal Synergy. Hey, how cool is that? Kumba, yeah, yeah. I exactly. Like it. Uh, With a fluffy name like that, it better yeah. do what we're planning on doing. But a CRO is, is a pretty simple, it, it's actually the little engine that could that drives the pharma industry. So for mm. those who are familiar, a CRO, when people think of, um, I mean, it just comes to top of mind, but, you know, think of Pfizer because they are a huge company. But companies, the, the uh, pharma companies don't actually do their own, they don't create, optimize, or scale their own enzymes or proteins, the biological reagents that go into their medicines, right? They actually uh, outsource that to these little pods of research groups that build the labs, that do the testing, that create the QC, that create the enzymes. So a big company might say, I have a really good idea in my R&D department to come up with this product. And I think it's going to have this enzyme that we're going to target to make that drug to do this, solve this problem. And then they say, okay, go figure out if it really does that. So they outsource. So most companies, literally, that is how pharma runs. The science world runs with CROs. Cannabis and hemp should absolutely be running off of CROs because the fact we didn't do that is why we have inherently some of the challenges today from standardization, from, uh, you know, QC testing, optimization, scaling, manufacturing aspects. Everything does come from that fundamental science, from that little team of benchtop researchers and companies, especially if you're on the midsize or smaller. You can't afford to build out a mass spectrometer and build you know, all these science minds, but a CRO already exists and you basically rent them out. You pay for like a, it's an FTE kind of package, like the, kind of like a co-op kind of thing then, right? Yeah. It, it's, you're paying for the FTEs. You're getting a chunk of hours. You're directing what you wanted to do and let them do the research and the work for you. But What's it comes out FTE? a full time equivalent. Okay. So Thank it's you. like you're buying a bunch of hours basically. So that's mm-hmm. what a CRO model is. On its most fundamental level, but it makes so much sense that we should have been doing this since day one. The second a company wanted to put a product out or make an enzyme, and the funny thing is, the way I, when this vision came into me, it was about that there's one CRO and it has different project managers or divisions or teams based on where it needs to be and based on what the companies want you to do. So we're focusing on enzymatic processes and enzymes as little nanomachines are the foundation of life. They're in everything from medicine, but also our agritech industry is reliant on that. And I would love to get to the point and we will where instead of sending all of our base products and our core um, fiber and herd and everything out to China to get the degumification, you know, there, there are parts of our manufacturing and processing that are not complete here. And we have to send them overseas and then get pieces back and then complete our products. We can do that here. We can do all of it here in the U.S. Hmm. So we need enzymes. We need certain enzymes to do certain things. That's what we will provide. So I want to help everybody. I don't care what part of the industry you're in. I just want to fill that that small but incredibly essential area so that brands can survive, can thrive, can maintain a better budget, don't have to expand or put in tremendous capital expense and resources and brain power that they just really can't afford to do. But well, we will be a little engine that could for the industry. And I think the other part is, you know, that 
you know, we have so many people doing things in their garage or basement, you know, that, you know, we, we need to grow up as an industry. But could you rewind a minute? Because I want to learn more about how CBD works in aromatherapy. I don't understand that. Yeah. So basically, one of the reasons selfishly that I wanted to build this research division, and we're going to do research studies. In fact, our first study with my science guys will be on long COVID. Right. We want to look, take a look at certain things uh, because we have some ideas about how things are really working and we need to be able to prove it. So I know what aromatherapy does because I've lived with it and used it for decades. But being able to prove it, being able to show on a molecular level what it does, being able to speak to getting a white paper and some clinical data and research out, that's important to me because I think it will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt what it is I've been preaching and singing and saying from my soapbox that I've been on for a couple decades. Aromatherapy, in its simplistic way of describing it, is the oldest healing modality on the planet to affect change on a mind, body, and spirit level simultaneously. Now, on a science level, how does it do that, especially the spirit side? Why does science speak to that? When people say, for example, that uh, CBD is not psychoactive and right, THC is, it's actually misspeaking yeah, it. And in the I latest agree. edition of my book, I cover it. All plant essences are, in fact, psychoactive because were they not, you wouldn't be able to affect mood. So mm-hmm. mood stabilization and adjustments, like taking a lavender bubble bath, that's a psychoactive response. Anesthesia is a modern application of a psychoactive experience. Well, that's, that's what Dave works. does every Saturday night, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> no, it lavender sounds bubble really bath. good. I'd love a CBD I, bath I, 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 I'm yeah. speaking out of turn here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, the aromatherapy is what I would do. I wouldn't waste the CBD in the water, uh, depending on delivery method, and right? So there are ways that I've... Some things I'd recommend, some things I wouldn't. But, okay. but aromatherapy is a basic one. When you breathe it, when you smell it, you are having an olfactory trigger and response to what it is that those terpenes are indicating. Now, on a metaphysical level, those terpenes or essential oils actually do create and evoke different energies and different moods. That's the metaphysical side. And on the physical side, they're working through the olfactory sense, which is the first sense in the human body to develop. It's connected to the limbic brain. It's why there actually is information and data about dementia and Alzheimer's patients responding to smell because it triggers memory. Now, in my work as a past life regressionist, again, moving all the way across the spectrum, it triggers cellular memory as opposed to not just current memory. So depending on the level of training experience uh, and efficacy you desire, you can look to aromatherapy, whether it's like super superficial stuff or really deep metaphysical. It doesn't matter to me. The fact is that it just works. You smell it, you breathe it. It's doing something to affect change in your experience in that moment in real time. Now, when you add CBD the way I did it and why I did it in a spray is because it's a really effective delivery method for an immediate impact. You don't have to wait for a digestion. You don't have to wait. It's not a medicine. I'm not making a medical claim. I'm just telling you how it impacts on a physiological and even a biochemical and an emotional and spiritual level. And to me, that's what I care about. Are you using it? Is it easy to use? Does it work? Do you feel different? Yes? Good. That's my goal. When you breathe in a fine mist, it's landing on your skin. It does have a lovely humectic quality. The essential oils are really lovely feeling and smelling. But you're also, because of the microdose of the CBD that I have in it, it lands also in the mucosal membrane lining of your nose. Again, that's that metaphysical to science crossover that I love so much. And so it actually does have a little teeny, it's like a synergistic play or a dance between the CBD driving those essential oils or the other terpenes. But to me, the magic of that product line is actually the terpenes. It's actually the essential oils first, boosted by CBD, almost like an entourage effect. Well, not almost like an entourage effect that you would expect or express in a different kind of product in the same way that THC is a natural entourage effect driver for the, you know, whether it's a hemp derived or a medical or adult use, right? They're all designed to have an interplay between those compounds. So I want to do more research as to the interplay. I want to study the effect of things on the human experience. And I want to make sure that we're creating sustainability and consistency for the baseline products themselves, regardless of their my brand or anyone else's. I think that as customers and consumers and patients, we deserve that. And I think as an industry, we must take accountability and hold a responsibility to provide that. 
Okay. Huh. So the delivery method. Now, my wife does the essential oil. She has the vaporizers. Is that the kind of thing that you're doing? Yeah, that's core line that I started. That's my flagship line. That is similar to the vaporizers and the essential oils. And there are lots of good companies out there, and there are lots of just like cannabis and hemp companies. So you're, so you're not just spraying it on your – I wouldn't just spray it on my mustache. It would be in a vaporizer. That's, I'm trying to understand the delivery method. In this method. case, the sprays that you see in the bottom of my screen here, those, those are meant to be – an aura, not an oral, although we are working on that too, an aura spray, meaning that I want it to be as close to your face and I want you to deeply breathe it in again. So you just spray some in. And- yes right in your okay. face and you just take a deep breath they are very very it's a very fine mist they're very light the smells are beautiful and the smells will lift away in a few minutes but the energy of it the impact of it actually can last for several hours depending on you and how you're feeling and what's going on for you it's pretty remarkable actually and then it does so you breathe that in and it does exactly what i'm a little confused still so so there are five different sprays they have different names different colors i like that the children start to i don't want to say they they know what they need and they know which color even if they're not reading they can go and say oh this one makes me feel relaxed or this one makes me feel uh for example clear the first spray is like wiping schmutz off a dirty window so it clears your schmutz. Or, I like you know, that. That's, that's my a good word, word. schmutz. No, he's a, a hockey player, so he'd probably want that one, right? A lot of schmutz yeah, in there. A lot schmutz. of smudge in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, these are the, uh, the, the sprays we're talking about are, are, are on the bottom of the screen here, the different colors in the sprays. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing there? Okay. Yeah. So I think like the gold one is for energy. energy. But, yeah, so clear is like the first thing is, you know about, uh, you've ever seen Native American smudging, saging? Right, to getting rid of your It's like that. Yeah. So it actually oh, has oh, that kind effect. of smudge. Okay, now I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're okay. lifting off to, but it's basically when you're feeling a little just stuff feels heavy and you just need to clear the palate, so to speak, you spray a couple all you do is two or three sprays in your face, take a deep breath, you'll notice it right away. Mm. And uh that's first step is clear, wipe off the schmutz from the window, let the light in and out. Okay. Mm. Then the second spray is center which centers and grounds you. And that's about your solar plexus chakra. That's about where a person makes decisions. Uh, when I've worked with vet groups, actually, uh, vets, you know, sometimes they are not trusting their gut anymore. They feel there's a tension, there's, there's an anxiety, there are histories of PTSD. Again, no medical claims, but I'm sharing that. There are stories of what it feels like, how people describe the feeling state off of it. So center is like, I nicknamed it, it's the headless, the antidote for the headless chicken moment. So when you're feeling a little too discombobulated, use that. It will center and ground you, make you feel a little more, okay, oh, good. I'm ready. I can process. Let's go. Nurture, the third spray, is almost has a food quality to it. There's a little cumin in it. So it has the effect of, well, this is my favorite story. One of the early, early, early people who used it was an autistic teenager. And I like that he verbally gave an expression to what the spray was. He called it yummy hug. Which was so beautiful. I mean, on just mm. every level, it was so beautiful that he said that. Mm-hmm. And he went, it is, because it wraps around, it feels, if you're sensitive, like a hug, but it works through your heart chakra, and it re-stimulates and charges that. So when you're feeling emotionally depleted, one or two sprays of that is a really lovely, like, okay, I'm good. I can keep going and keep giving and keep doing. Then Inspire is my favorite because it's the one that clears the and opens up the throat chakra and your third eye. Like on a metaphysical level, it just, it really allows you to think and to receive things, information and guidance and whatever else you want to call it. But it unmushes your brain. And yet it also can help go to sleep. Uh, at least that's what the kids tell me who have used it. Because it depends on what you want the brain to do. If you're trying to focus and think and regurgitate and get work done, I use center and inspire. So it's like I trust my gut. I get my information. I feel clear. I can think. I can process. I communicate. And and they're really, uh, I've had my daughter, when she had finals, those were the combinations that she used in school. So that it really helped her to focus and like just feel more solid taking so is this like a once a day thing twice a twice day, a day I mean, recommended twice a day i say brush your teeth you know keep the sprays near and just use them morning and night if you need a pick-me-up 
anything. I was to say, sometimes you need, your behind is dragging. So what, you got something for that? Or? Yeah, it depends on why your behind is dragging. But I'd say for a pick-me-up, for me, it's the center. That's the headless chicken one. When I have too many things going on in a day, can't imagine how that could be. <laughs> then I use that one. Happen. And then I'll use Inspire, or it depends on how I'm feeling. My usual pick-me-up at the end of the day around dinner time-ish would be my nurture because I'm thinking, oh, I still have 20 more things to do before I call it a night. Uh, but usually if it depends if it's moving, motion, or if I'm around too many people, I'll use Clear again. Uh, conferences, definitely. After I've been around, to, I use Clear because I tend to pick up people's emotions and their energy a lot. So mm-hmm. I want to make sure that's scary. scary. So you got a lot of stuff yeah. going on there, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's my, my response. And the smile spray is the last one. That one was added when I started with the CBD that was added in 2016. It's hmm. called smile because it was named after a, a child who was a little more on the spectrum and used it and ran around and was, you know, just um, having some challenges. The mother looked very tired and we sprayed that child and he stopped running and stood and looked right at his mom and smiled. Oh, wow. And that was wow. that was something. Mama's and, little I'm, yeah, and I'm not happened. even making a claim. I'm just telling you a story about what an happened. experience that happened for someone. That's why it's called that. So the formulation was designed for me to be technically to assist with those that might be under a label like an ADHD or all of that. Or children who are, this phrase used to even be called beyond the spectrum because I do mm. think that everyone is on or beyond the spectrum in their own meaning meaningful way, whatever that looks like for that child or that person. So that spray is a, uh, think of it as a, a mood uplifter and a stabilizer at the same time. It's like the, it's the one that integrates all the way, all the way through the chakras and just kind of puts the whole package together. Huh. I mean, this is a lot through terpenes or aromatherapy, depending on which angle you're coming at it from. The cannabis strains that are grown to produce the CBD, uh, is, is that where you get the terpene profiles? No, or? the terpene profiles come from the essential oil side. So they are, mm. uh, like, I'm trying to think of the nurture, um, Canadian spruce, labdanum, lavender, mandarin, uh, all different essential oils. They are still phytocannabinoids, but they're coming from other species, not cannabis or hemp. Only the CBD itself that in this case is uh, a specific molecule that's coming in to boost what those essential oils do by providing that traditional what one might appreciate CBD is useful for. But to me, those essences and the way they exist in nature were meant to dance together. That's why when you make a blend, they seem to create a stronger, have a more of an oomph, a little more of an impact than where you just use one or two oils. Each bottle contains four or five different essential oils plus the boost of the CBD. Hmm. So it's a, it's a whole combination, little magic set, little bit of alchemical combination in there. But they're cool. they're lovely, and they're just they're very easy, and they're also inexpensive. Because part of what bothered me was as a single self employed mom, yeah, you know, my budget. I can't blow a budget on all the beautiful supplements I want for yeah. myself and for my kids. Not to mention the shoes, right? It. You know, so, <laughs> not yeah. to mention so. all the shoes. Yes, right. So, so I do let's ask what, what, what is it work. What what is that? I'm I'm always the the guy that asks the question. So how much does this cost? So each one is thirty nine ninety five. They're forty bucks each, or one eighty five for the set, and they last for several months, depending on how. Unless you you know pour half the bottle out into your bathtub, which you know, I would say you. No, can, Dave doesn't um, do that. I don't think so. No, but you you kind of don't have to. What I liked about them is they're for people. Uh, the tagline, you know me with my taglines. When I first made them, the tagline was for anyone seeking sanity on the way to serenity. Ooh, mm-hmm. I like that. I could work with oh. that. No, so they're kind of easy. You put them in your purse. Just don't leave them in a hot car or somewhere where they get heated because heat will uh, kind of kill off some of the terpenes. You don't want that. Mm. But other than that, and then I have a topical that, you know, they're all designed to work together. My topical is 500 milligrams of CBD, full spectrum hemp extract, shea butter, and the 10 essential oils to match two from each of the bottles so that you're getting a very, very complete inside out and outside in. So you do mm-hmm. tincture, then the sprays, you'll notice the change in the scent of the palette, and then the topical. So no matter what's going on for you, 
this stuff will cover a lot. And that's why it's the basis. It's where I start. But the research now that we'll be doing on top of it, the studies and helping other brands to create incredibly strong, powerful products, whether it's agritech or medical, pharma, cosmeceutical or nutraceutical, it doesn't matter to us. What do you need done and how can we help you do it? And do it right. I mean, that's kind of where I'm really coming from without, yeah. you know, saying anything. I don't mean to be disparaging, but aren't we all a little tired of some of the bad actors and mm-hmm. problems that are inherent that I just, they don't really need to be there. You know, huh. we can do better. We have to do better. We really do. It is time this industry grows up, it takes accountability. We'll have to get her uh, nominated for the Hempy Awards. What do you think, Blaine? Yeah. Well, <laughs> certainly the product should certainly get into the Hempy yeah. Awards. Yeah, so I think you're right about that. That sounds good to me. So I have to come up to Michigan. Oh, my family's from there. My mom's family is. Uh, my mother was born in Detroit. Actually. Oh, really? Okay. I live in Ann Arbor. We're scattered around the state. Blaine's in near Muskegon and uh, Dave's north of Detroit. So I have a cousin in Muskegon, too. And actually, my late grandmother wrote a book, Vignettes from Her Childhood, and it's called 9547 Greeley because that's mm. the house they lived in. I don't oh. know where that is. I've never been. But my family. So, so you have the author thing in your family, then, must be. Yes, I do. I come from a line of uh, female writers. Uh, my first cousin is Allegra Goodman. She's a very famous author and uh, a lot of professors a lot of science. My late father was an early neuroscientist, so whether scientifically published or or poetically published, I do have both in the family. Well, let's go deeper into your backstory. How did you get plugged into all this stuff and how did give us that sort of catalyst story? When did it all start? I think that I've always been very strongly attracted to a shamanistic perspective, even when I was early clergy. It was sort of an accidental career being becoming a cantor, but I have a good voice. I did get two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's. Oh, that's right. You got to sing as a cantor or something. I, yes, yeah, I do okay. sing. Yeah, I sing a lot. <laughs> so I can I'm an Irish Catholic. What would I know, you know? Yeah, so, go ahead. you know yeah, cantors. So. They have them in church. And I've sung in a lot of ecumenical services and concerts and things back in the day. And, yeah, so I have been doing that. And uh, so I fell into, instead of flipping burgers at the student union, you know, back in college, I got a job singing in a large synagogue. But So mm-hmm. my first synagogue job was actually I was 16. So I've been doing it a really long time, and I never left. I like to sing and lend for any kind of interfaith musical concert, anything. So I did all of that, and uh, but at the same time, I found that the roots of all the Judeo-Christian religions and things that I taught all shared a synergy and understanding about the impact of nature. And Judaism especially is, is an agriculturally based religion, the calendar, all of our major holidays, people don't really think about it that way. But but in fact, it is. So naturally, I was always drawn to that side. How do people and culture respond and exist and thrive? And how is nature a part of that? So it's always been a part of the way I thought and what I've been drawn to. Now, fast forward to when I was years later, I'm, I'm a young mom now, young-ish, had these kids. My kids were kind of struggling. Life was trickier. People seemed to be so much more anxiety and stress. And now PTSD is a societal issue. I don't know a single human being, especially after the last year and a half, that is not struggling with some form of anxiety, depression, co-occurring morbidities, you know, with all of that. And it's just... um And I looked to aromatherapy because it was just a simple, I'd always liked it. You know, the stuff worked. I I appreciated it. And I said, well, how can I make something that while I'm doing my work in the world and while I'm raising my kids, what can I offer that's going to help people to just have a calmer, more relaxing, just feel better moment in their day? And that's where I came up with the sprays. So it really was always a, a part of how I thought and what I did, but it was sort of an accidental. I didn't really plan on building a huge company from it. I just wanted to help people. And I wanted to help myself and my kids because, oh, when my my future Marine, when he was little, that oh boy. I put it this way. We were on Bravo for a very good reason. I'm literally a Bravo mom. I was a reality TV mom. I was on the debut episode of Extreme Guide to Parenting. Trust me when I tell you, if my kids weren't, pretty unique and funky and we weren't all big personalities I don't think we would have landed on the debut episode (laughs) so it tells you a little bit about just how necessary these products were when I was raising them and then everybody else was using them too it was great it just 
it naturally evolved. And so the book did too. It came out of life experience, a need state. You know, they say that uh, necessity is the motherhood of invention. Well, I'm the mother. Did, did your scientist dad help you with the early formulations or what? No, my father passed five years ago. And even though the company was, was made before that, but he did give me a strong appreciation and understanding of, he was a physiological psychologist. He created mm. when I was a little kid, I did maybe by osmosis, I picked up some stuff, but he was at Penn the University of Pennsylvania, and he created mm-hmm. a major called the Biological Basis of Behavior. It's a famous program called the BBB major. It was mm. basically early neuroscience. And I have my first cousins, the the husband of that famous author cousin, mm-hmm. uh, my two cousins, their husbands, a bunch of that side of the family, they're all MIT and Harvard, they're neuroscience, they're, bio- okay, you know, my sister-in-law, molecular biologist, et cetera. So lots of, it's a little bit of both. I just have a lot of family members that are beautiful, brilliant people. Um, And my late mother was a poet. And because they're both not on the planet and of, you know, I'm a little young to not have parents and grandparents, I think I, um, I decided that these products and the research and the advancement of this industry, it's a personal mission because I don't want people to go through some of what I did go through. I don't want people to lose their parents to states of dis-ease that I know that cannabis and cannaflavoins, et cetera, could do more for. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that that's your legacy to, to make a difference in the world. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I've helped kids. I help families. Um, it's an honor to serve and to be in service. And that's what the plant species herself does. Uh, that's a plant that's in service to humanity from everything from uh, the earliest entheogens and analgesics to, you know, the incense that came out of it to, I mean, there are biblical references to cannabis and hemp dating back to the first experience of a woman using it in childbirth in 500 CE. And by the way, should you get the book on Amazon? And there's a whole chapter on the world yeah. history. Of cannabis That's account. You know. How much did, you did you compile all of this? Oh no, I got to borrow most. I compiled parts of it, but I have a lot of smart people and all the references as to where I got materials and articles from. They're all in there. Um, yeah, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> it's uh, a lot. It's a lot to do. Yeah, right. I like to see it in the chronological order. That's really cool because it's kind yeah. of interesting. Yeah, you've seen bits and pieces, of course, other places, but to see it all compiled in chronological order. You can also watch the trends, you know, so it really helps. Uh, I I like to see, I kind of have always been pretty good about seeing where something is going ahead of time, a little bit of an advance. I get little glimpses of things in a weird way, just like I knew to make this phrase. And I, I mean, really, where did that idea come from? I don't know. Some of us just have good intuition or trust guidance, and I've, I've always listened to mine, so. So it's interesting, but a lot of why we do things sometimes comes from a little small inkling, even if we have no idea why we need to do it. Then you see a year or two years down, wow, I'm really glad I did that because it kind of set me up for where I am now, and I had no idea. So that's a little bit about what this company is about, what these products were about. It's seeing things and sensing. And even when you read the whole history, look at it and look at the patterns and say, well, this is feeling a little familiar or some, or you can see where politics came in and what felt authentic, what was real, what wasn't, where we went down the wrong rabbit hole and how we can kind of emerge and fix things. It comes from recognizing where we've been and, and connecting and activating the vision of where we choose to go. Do you have national retail distribution or do you do everything online? Mostly I'm online. I had some small wholesalers. You know, I love the fact that I've met every wholesaler I've ever had is someone I've personally met, usually at a conference or when I would do a talk or something. And that's very meaningful to me. But COVID was hard on a lot of these companies. So at this point, once I we get this research going, there are some other things I want to do to amp up the line. I have some new products coming out. Then, yes, we are working on a larger distribution model. And I'm certainly open to if it's the right fit, but I 
I never really wanted to just have my stuff stuck in various stores for the sake of selling it through stores. I would rather people understand who I am, why I'm here, ask me questions. This is an educational platform as much as it's a product platform, I think, as a company. And now the research will be really important. So, yes, we'll have media and marketing and sales and education like everybody else should if they're trying to you know, make a living at this. But I care about the deep why and who is using it. And therefore, it's not really just about sticking it in stores, even though I do want it to be accessible. But online is accessible. It's shearasynergy.com. And I even have a special coupon code for everyone that I listen to. And uh, I'm going to create that, right, as soon as the show is done. I hem. Just enter little I, capital H, E-M-P, on Shira Synergy and enjoy. Shira Synergy. Dot com. Dot com. You know what? I'll he's he's sure. going to put your website up here, so yeah. stand by. Beautiful. No worries. And I'm texting my daughter who forgot that I was on. That's right. Oh Create that code real quick. You know, so. One of the things that your book has got me curious about, but going back with your, um, so far into your, where this all came to be and the first time things appear, and I'm a sailor, right? And we all know that, that canvas, that's cannabis, canvas, that's where it came from, right? Yes, 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 yes. It's, in, it's I interesting. Know. I want to find out who thought this plant, right, could be a good canvas material to make for sales and when they first started using that. So that's my new, after reading this little book, I don't know why that kind of stuck with me, but that's my new little... Let's uh, find out. I, I didn't out. look that... I mean, it was enough to cover the whole world history, so I didn't look, but I did write about how the USS Constitution, it is in there that the first ropes on our very first warships were all made out of uh, and fiber as well. So That's the George funny. Washington influence. You know, he was Actually, a right, farmer. they're in there. Yeah, so. And when I do my ABCs of CBD which is, by the way, it is a trademark title because it's a downloadable educational and media content platform. Uh, people like to sometimes borrow that title. I'm like, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> a lawyer will be you know, you know, so. But, you know, it happens, and it, it's thank you for liking the title. Uh, but, Blaine, my, um, the woman who is a brilliant biochemist by background uh, did seven biotech startups. She is my CRO, business development strategy advisor, she is my rock. I want to be her when I grow up. Her name is Laura Saylor, and we are the yin and yang to each other. I've got all the big vision, and she goes, that's beautiful, Shira. Now let's talk the numbers, and let me pull it back down to reality. <laughs> she does that. Uh, but she is Laura Saylor, and she is a sailor. Oh, cool. She's oh. retrofitting parts of the boat. I think she has a hemp. There's some part of the boat that she's going to be making out of hemp. And we're really excited to work into the focus on this new company launching and building into the agritech industrial and making the enzymes to make it a lot easier for all of our people doing incredible work. And in, uh, we'll be focusing on bioplastic and biofuels and energy and, uh, and biocrete. I actually do own the trademark for the word biocrete on purpose. So okay. pretty exciting stuff that we are going to get into. Really fits exciting. into your little project this weekend, fuels. right, Blaine? I need the biofuels. Let me know. Did you see my little? Did you see my little background there? That's bio. I saw it. We, I, I literally was like, note to sell. Further conversation with Blaine about. Oh, well, we, we make we can it. help you with that, my dear. We can we help you with it. that. Yes, we do. So wouldn't uh, that be uh, great? Look, when you have uh, each part of the chapters, you uh, put a little quote in there from different people. So. Um, I just think that this is just a fun read, everybody. You really Thank should, you. Even though you know a lot of stuff about CBD and you think at all, this is just a great, great read. Um, and I hope everybody uh, gets a chance to buy it and, and reads the book. So That's very sweet of you. Thank you for saying I appreciate it. It is meant to be inaccessible, even though there's a lot of content in there. It's, uh, it's meant for the every reader in a lot of ways. You know, it doesn't matter what, how much we already know. There's something for everybody in there. And that's why I'm so grateful that somebody called it the industry Bible. And it's still, I've sold over 15,000 copies of that by word of mouth, basically. Wow. I mean, it's, <laughs> so good it's, I'm people. happy it's used, I'm happy it's useful to people. I'm, oh, I'm just beyond, beyond. Well, this isn't <sighs> one of those books that you get it, it just sits on the shelf. That's the good thing about it. So, <laughs> no, people yeah. actually read it. It's easy yeah, to read. It's well it. formatted. It's, it's good. If I'm going to put but, something out, it's going to be, yeah, I do appreciate that. I, I like the short paragraphs. It makes it, uh, we're, we're so trained to read small chunks of text, so. 
Yeah, you know what? It is important for your eye and the brain and how you mm-hmm. receive information. Yeah, it has to be digestible. The formatting is actually yeah. kind of important. That was and different. I, that was, uh... I love the quotes at the top. That is my favorite part. Putting those in were my favorite part yeah. because I uh, just got to represent different energies, people, you know, attitudes and approaches. And my favorite one, I think, would be, I think it's Chapter 14. I don't remember. Um, it's Irma Bombeck has a quote at the top, and it says, Never trust a doctor whose office plants have died. <laughs> mm. that and good. that's yeah that was kind of it's one of my favorite because my late mother and my grandmother they loved Irma Bombeck and I think if you're under 50 I'm not even sure people know who that is anymore but, oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. So, so reference for that that's chapter 14 it's oh, conversation right? with your kids that's where you have that, 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 that yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah okay conversation alright well thank you so much Shira. We're, we're at the end of our hour and yeah, we're we just still have to do the recipe yes well this could be another chapter for your book coming up here. So Whoa. go ahead, Blaine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we want to thank everybody. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm on the road today. I'm at the uh, the plant making the oil and some other stuff, doing things there. But uh, we do want to thank our sponsors that have helped us this past uh, few months to go to some of the events we've gone to and help us uh, get things going. And that's going to be um, U.S. Hemp Brokerage. Dave, help me here. Um, uh, Neogen, Veritas Labs, um, Michael and Hemp. Uh, made by hemp. Made by hemp. Uh, Michigan Marijuana Report. Yes, absolutely. You are a strong supporter. We appreciate that very yes, much. Yes, sir. Um, uh, Adams Independent Labs. Yep. Yeah, she's going to be on next week. Yes, uh, Kira will be on next week. That's going to be fun. Kira is always great. Yep. She's another. She's another great. Uh, uh, a great champion and uh, has a great uh, service that she provides there. Another, Another guest that will make us look better on camera, too. Yeah, yeah. it's sort of three old guys, right? You know, so. <laughs> They do pretty us up, don't they? Yes. Uh, I want to remember again, uh, this Saturday at the Critter Barn, we're going to be doing a little hempcrete, uh, making the bricks so that they can use that as a fundraiser for their, uh, their project there, making that new farm. Uh, then the following Saturday, uh, starting at 10 o'clock at Lakeland Hemp, uh, we're going to be starting with grow, growlers in the grow, and then we're going to uh, have a great time visiting with them. If you missed that show last week, you really should go back and uh, look at that show. They, they've they been able to find the vertical path uh, for income and been able to do a very fine job with that uh, using Internet sales. So Yeah, and it was interesting to see where uh, they made some connections and uh, got some business as a result of being on the show, which is yeah. exciting to see. Yeah, that's yep. great. And we contact them about getting the uh, clones for next year. So, um, so see. It works. It really does. <laughs> well, thanks, Cheryl. I'll paste that in the uh, website chat. Yeah. Great. And then uh, uh, deadline for the early bird is going to be October 15th for the expo. Uh, and uh, you want to be getting your um, your stuff in for the heppies. We'll be starting to take that real soon to get the judges working on that. So uh, looking forward to that for sure. So, And now we do... Recipe. There we go. Oh, you got to look at this, sure. This is the opticals that go along with this, you know. This looks delicious. Oh, mm-hmm. you're killing me. I'm starting a diet. <laughs> Garlicly uh, cheese one, hemp speed spread. I like it. Holidays are coming as well, so that they are. Good, this is a right? great so. one for uh, yep yeah, for October for your Halloween parties and things coming up. Uh, it says it's delicious for dip or uh, for parties or just for snacking. So again, I like pretty simple things. This is a five minuter, um, really easy to do. This is again we're going to give credit here by uh, this is by Robin, the soup of this out. Uh, it's a cheese spread that's sure to please. The ingredients are half a cup of the yeast. Uh, half a cup of the hemp seeds, two and a quarter teaspoons of the organic uh, misto, miso, white or chickpea, whatever you like there, three quarters tablespoon of garlic powder, and a tablespoon of apple vinegar. So a really simple recipe, easy to make, five minutes, and voila. You have something that will sure to impress your friends and neighbors, and uh, it's also kind of healthy, believe it or not. So... So we want to thank everybody again for this week joining us. Uh, next week we'll have Kia on with Adam's Independent Testing. And yeah. until then, everybody take care. And Shira, great thing. ABC. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Highly you. informative. So. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Give me that recipe, Blaine. All right. One more time to think where they can find this. That's on Amazon, and I'm on social at the one, the number one, T H E one, Shira Adler, my name. Books on Amazon. Products are on ShiraSynergy.com. 
Right. Such a marketer. Thanks okay. so much. Peace yeah. and love. Thanks, everybody. See you all. Bye, everyone. Bye.